Welcome to part five in the Ableton Live tutorial series. You've made your track and now you want to export the audio. Then this video is for you. I go over all of the exporting options in the export panel. Hello everyone and welcome to Distinct Mastering. My name is Freddie. I'm a mastering engineer, producer, DJ, and president of Sleeping Giant Music. For over two decades, I've helped artists grow their careers. And now I'm here to help you with your music production skills. If you'd like a free stereo master sample from me, be sure to check the link below in my description. Now let's chat about the Ableton Live's exporting window. All right, we're back and I've got Ableton open up. This is the last part in the series. I do want to preface by stating this is not a full blown Ableton tutorial. I'm not going to teach you every parameter and function, but more of a quick overview, as well as some tips and tactics that I use and just concepts of how to think about it. Now this is part five, so we're gonna be talking about the export audio window. So you've got your song done and you're ready to export. You're just gonna to go to file, export audio video, and you get this window here. It's pretty simple, but the most important things to pay attention to, you know, the first one here is you have the options of what you want rendered. So you can pick your master, all individual tracks or selected tracks. If you just need a stereo master, you're just going to go ahead and pick this master here. If you want to pick all individual tracks, what's going to happen is it's going to bounce every single track, including the effects separately. So you're going to get everything as one stem. Now, if you were to select some tracks, you know, highlight them and use this option, then it's just going to export those tracks. Now, one thing to note, if you didn't make a selection here like this and export, it's going to just export the whole song. But you have the render start and you have the render length. So you could change that here. If you wanted that to be 100, you could do so. Um, also, if you're exporting just a session view loop, you can make it as long as you want by using this length. So that's a tip. If you don't have anything on the arrangement view, you could literally just export a four bar loop and say, I want it to be as, you know, 20 bars, 100 bars, whatever you want. Now, the next one here is a great option, include return and master effects. So if I'm on the master, it's always by default gonna be on. But if I switch this to all individual tracks, you see how it changes colors there. And selected tracks, it's always gonna be on. With all individual tracks, you can turn it off and it's gonna print with or without the master effects. So that's a unique function right there. Now, if you're trying to get some tracks ready for stem mastering and you just need say five stems, like we recommend when I request STEM masters, um, maybe a couple more for dance music, then the best way to do it is really not using these. What I like to do is I like to use track mutes over here. And I do have a video on prepping your files for STEM mastering, so I'll leave you a link up above so you can check that out. Now, underneath that, you have a couple more options, which is render as a loop, convert to mono, normalize, create analysis file. Those are pretty self-explanatory. If you need any of those, you can turn those on. By default, the create analysis file is turned on. I typically turn it off. I don't need an Ableton analysis file if I'm doing a final bounce. And then you have the option to pick your sample rate. You have the option to pick your file types here and you can pick wave AIFF or FLAC FLAC. You have the option to pick your bit depth. Now you should keep your bit depth the same that you started your session in. If you need to convert to a lower bit depth, you need to turn your dither on but I never convert to a lower bit depth. Only at the final mastering stage is when you should convert to a lower bit depth and leave the dithering to a mastering engineer. So I typically make sure that this is always turned off. If you need an MP3, you can turn that on here. And then if you happen to be working with video, you can create a video along with this, but I don't really use Ableton for video. I'm a music producer and I use Ableton for music. Once you're done, just hit export and pick your location of where you want your file. And there you go. That's a brief overview of the Ableton export window. And that's a detailed look at the Ableton Live export window. If you have any questions, be sure to drop a comment down below. If we've never worked together before and you'd like a free stereo master sample from me, be sure to hit the link below in my description. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and the bell notification will keep you up to date. Once again, my name is Freddie from Distinct Mastering, and have a great day.